This uh, short uh, slide deck is about some theoretical relationships uh, which provide a, an underlying structure uh, to the thermodynamic part of uh, thermal physics. Uh, we'll just uh, look at the highlights, uh, but you will find uh, that some of the basic ideas will be useful. In particular, uh, we're going to introduce the difference between what are called intensive variables and what are called extensive variables. Intensive variables are independent of the size of the system. Uh, extensive variables uh, grow as the system grows. Uh, so an example of the difference uh, would be if you uh, look at uh, a lump of material. Uh, its mass uh, is an extensive uh, property because it depends on how much of the material uh, that you have but its density only depends on, on the uh, material itself uh, and not on how much of it there is. So, uh, so in that particular example, uh, density is an example of an intensive variable. So here's the summary. We're going to look at uh, intensive and extensive functions. Uh, then we're going to look at how they relate to homogeneous uh, poly polynomials and homogeneous functions. Uh, we'll uh, then uh, develop uh, the Euler equation. Uh, we'll see that it leads uh, to a relationship between the Gibbs free energy and the chemical potential. And then finally, uh, we'll uh, uh, introduce the gibbs doom equation. Uh, and the gibbs doom equation is a relationship uh, linking uh, the uh, three intensive variables uh, that show uh, that they're not uh, independent of each other. So uh, the, the, the intensity of uh, variables uh, in uh, thermal physics are Tp and mu, uh, in other words, temperature, pressure, and chemical potential. The other variables we've met, energy, entropy, volume, uh, number of particles, uh, enthalpy, uh, Helmholtz free energy, and Gibbs free energy, uh, those are extensive. Uh, and uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to uh, look at how you can relate some of these quantities by using the theory of hemo homogeneous functions. We've actually mentioned uh, this before, and I told you that we might come back to it later. So, starting with polynomials. Uh, I've got a, a standard expression for a polynomial on the slide, uh, and if uh, the uh, coefficient of the nth term isn't equal to zero, uh, and it's the, it's the highest term, uh, then that uh, power uh, is uh, the, uh, the, the degree of the polynomial. Uh, and uh, a polynomial uh, is homogeneous if all uh, the terms are of the same degree. Uh, so if you uh, look at uh, the polynomial I have listed uh, there, uh, that's uh, homogeneous of degree 2. We can extend the idea uh, to arbitrary functions. So we take a uh, an arbitrary uh, a function lambda, uh, which later we may call a scaling function. And uh, the the rule is if you uh, have a, a function of x and you multiply that by another function uh, g of lambda, that allows us uh, to calculate uh, the uh, function of uh, lambda times x. Uh, and uh, mathematically, uh, you can show uh, that uh, the only way uh, uh, this works is if uh, the, uh, the function g uh, is homo homogeneous of degree n in uh, the variable. So uh, of practical importance, intensive functions turn out to be homogeneous of degree 0, uh, and extensive functions are homogeneous of degree 1. So we start with the entropy. I've written here uh, the entropy as a function of E, V, and N, with one difference from what, what we've done before. Uh, in the past, we've used a capital N, which stood for the number of particles. In this example, I've used a lowercase n, uh, which stands for the number of moles of material. So uh, it's, uh, it's always possible to switch back and forth between these sorts of expressions. Sometimes you have to fix which constant you're using. Uh, but uh, this using moles in this instance makes things a little bit more straightforward. 
So using uh, the idea on the previous slide, uh, I'm going to say uh, that if we uh, start with a function of e, uh, v, and n, uh, then uh, and we multiply each of uh, those uh, uh, terms uh, by uh, a scale factor lambda, uh, then because e, v, and n are all homogeneous of degree 1, uh, we can uh, find uh, the new value of uh, the entropy just by multiplying entropy uh, by the scaling factor uh, and entropy raised uh, to the power 1 because these are homogeneous uh, of degree 1 in this uh, particular case. We can gain some insight uh, by choosing uh, a particular value for lambda. So what I'm going to choose is I'm going to choose lambda to be equal to 1 over the number of, of moles. So uh, plugging uh, that in uh, then uh, to our expressions with the lambdas, uh, we have E over N, or the energy per mole, uh, V over N, or the volume uh, per mole, and, uh, and then N over N, uh, which is equal to 1. Um, so uh, that uh, tells us uh, that, that the way uh, to scale from our, our original function is just to multiply it by 1 over N. Uh, and uh, we can write uh, the, uh, the new quantities, uh, the energy per mole, the volume per mole, uh, in terms of a lowercase symbol. Uh, and uh, the, uh, since we're dividing uh, the uh, uh, total uh, entropy by the uh, uh, number of moles on the right-hand side, that's in fact uh, the, uh, the entropy uh, per mole. Uh, so uh, it, uh, we can uh, write uh, that S of E, uh, V, and 1 uh, then uh, is, uh, is the entropy uh, per mole. Uh, so uh, we can recast uh, the, equa uh, the equation, uh, and you can see why lambda is now called a scaling function, because it just scales up the entropy. We may return uh, to this idea uh, later in the semester, uh, but this is just to show you uh, the theoretical underpinnings of, uh, of the relationship between intensive and extensive variables. Uh, the details uh, you would, would see in a later class in thermal physics or uh, a uh, class on functional analysis. We're going to do one more thing with it, and that's uh, to uh, to invent uh, the Euler function. So again, I've written uh, this time a scaling uh, for energy, uh, and I can differentiate uh, both sides of uh, this uh, equation with respect to lambda. And in doing the differentiation, I've actually uh, flipped uh, the uh, the uh, sides of the equation, which are displayed uh, from uh, the uh, top line and the second line. So we can simplify that expression, uh, and amda, uh, lambda is, is always arbitrary. I can choose it to be anything uh, that I want to. So I'm going to choose lambda to be equal to 1, uh, and uh, that gives us a, a very uh, simple uh, expression. And you might notice that all of those partial derivatives now are quantities uh, that we've seen uh, before. Uh, in fact, uh, the, uh, the, th the three partial derivatives are related uh, to temperature, uh, pressure and uh, and uh, chemical potential, uh, in, and uh, we have to uh, insert the, the correct signs, uh, uh, and in fact, the correct sign on the middle term on the right hand side. Uh, but uh, but but again, uh, that gives us a much simpler expression when we use uh, those uh, definitions. So uh, inserting uh, those uh, definitions, uh, we get uh, a relationship uh, that involves uh, seven of the extensive variables. Uh, it's, uh, sorry, uh, seven variables. They're not all extensive. Uh, the obviously uh, temperature, uh, pressure, and, uh, and chemical potential are intensive. Uh, but it, it does relate seven of the variables uh, for us. Uh, and uh, it uh, may uh, not be that useful itself because uh, it's uh, we would need uh, to uh, to know lots of the var variables to calculate uh, the seventh one. So normally we would use a simpler expression, but uh, the derivative of uh, this expression, uh, or at least the differential of this expression, uh, turns out to be useful. So. Uh, First, though, uh, what I'll do is we can say uh, start if we start uh, with the Euler equation here, 
and uh, we plug in uh, the uh, the Gibbs uh, free energy, uh, you can see that many of the terms cancel out, and we're just left with uh, G is equal to mu times n. Uh, so, uh, in in other words, uh, mu uh, here is the Gibbs free energy uh, per mole uh, when when we uh, uh, make that calculation, and if we looked at the related uh, equations uh, f uh, involving particle number, uh, we could also uh, have a version of mu uh, that was the Gibbs free energy per particle. We can also add for a multi-component system, uh, which I'm not going to go into uh, this morning, Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at uh, at this, uh, and by the way, this is called the energy form of the Euler equation. We could solve it for entropy and get the entropy form. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to express uh, this in differentials. So just taking the differential of uh, both uh, sides, uh, you can uh, see uh, uh, what uh, we get. Uh, but also uh, recognizing now when we have uh, these terms, We've got TDS uh, minus PDB plus mu dN, uh, which uh, we recognize uh, is DE on the right-hand side, and we have DE on the left-hand side. So what that means is we can make uh, the left-hand side zero uh, by el and eliminate three terms from the right-hand side. And then uh, what we're left with is this equation, uh, which is the gibbs uh, Doom equation. Uh, and it shows that the three intensive variables are not independent. If we know two of them, uh, the value of the third can be calculated uh, from the gibbs Doom equation. So uh, that's just a short introduction uh, using uh, some new uh, expressions. Uh, we may uh, use some of them in the future. In fact, I, I, I would say we will probably uh, use the gibbs Doom function in, uh, or the gibbs Doom equation in the future. Uh, I may uh, give you a homework problem or two that uses one or other of these equations. But the key things uh, to remember from uh, this uh, mini lecture are the idea of extensive and intensive variables uh, with TP and mu uh, being the intensive ones, the rest being extensive, and uh, the Euler equation and the gibbs Doom equation. And you can always uh, generate uh, the gibbs Doom equation if you know the Euler equation by taking uh, the differential of the, uh, the uh, Euler equation and inserting uh, the fundamental thermodynamic identity. So that's it, uh, and uh, we'll uh, see you again on a Zoom uh, after uh, spring break.